The Good Place is honestly one of the best shows on TV. And if you're like me, you're very sad that it just entered its final season. But here's the thing. There's such amazing social commentary in this show, and I feel like it just whew, goes over a bunch of people's heads. So let's talk about it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics from movies, TV shows, the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And don't forget to follow me over on social media at The Rewired Soul over on Instagram and Twitter. All right, so a couple quick things. First off, if you haven't watched The Good Place, there's gonna be some spoilers, all right? Not massive spoilers, spoilers, some might be considered massive, but it's all based on your own perspective. But anyways, if you haven't watched it yet, you can leave, come back after you check the show out, or just stick around and maybe this will make you interested in watching this show because it's an amazing show. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it. But anyways, I have been just so into moral philosophy, moral psychology, human evolution, just so much of that stuff lately. I've just been binging these books. And I might do a separate video or a podcast episode just kind of talking about why I feel philosophy and mental health tie in so much and how I think moral psychology really affects a lot of people's mental health. But anyways, anyways, let's get started. The Good Place is this amazing show and it, it's based around like the first season they're in the good place. You know, main character is Eleanor. She goes to the good place, all right? And something that, you know, my girlfriend and I we were, we were noticing, like mainly with Tahani in the first season, I was like, how, how did Tahani get in the good place? All right, so Tahani, she donated a lot to charity. She did a lot of fundraisers and everything like that, right? But as you kind of start to learn more about the good place and then you start to see more dilemmas in later seasons, but, we call this self-seeking, right? Doing something, expecting something in return. And Tahani, she was only doing those good things to try to, you know, outdo her sister and get recognition and all that kind of stuff, right? And by the way, real quick side note, I'm spiritual but not religious. I know some of you hate when people talk about that, but that's one of the things that I didn't like about religion and we'll be talking more about that in a second, and this is not all religious people, but I think Tahani is a perfect example of, are you really virtuous if you're only doing something for an end game, right? And we're gonna talk about Doug Forsett in just a few minutes. But this is something that I always wondered, like if you're a religious person, you're only doing these things to get into the good place or heaven, if you will, are you really that good of a person? So we later find out, which is was, the most unexpected twist that I have seen in a long time on TV. At the end of the first season, we find out that they're not actually in the good place, they're actually in the bad place, all right? And you're kind of wondering, like I think a lot of us wondered that with Chidi. Tahani, I was like, well, no, duh. But with Chidi, Chidi dedicated his life to moral and ethical philosophy, all right? And there's a lot of talk about utilitarianism and deontology, and we'll talk about that more in just a minute. Those two different trains of thoughts when it comes to philosophy. Well, anyways, as the season goes on, right, we, we see Michael make this shift from a bad demon to kind of a, 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 a demon who's empathizing more with these humans, trying to figure out what's going on. So as it goes on, Michael wants to figure out how to get these people into the good place. So he finds Doug Forsett. Doug Forsett, when he was on, a, a, what was it, an acid or a mushroom trip, he figured out what the actual good place is and how it's based on a point system. So they go and visit Doug Forsett. And for this dude, for a majority of this guy's life, he has done every single move he can make to get to the good place, right? Like the dude even goes as far as drinking his own recycled urine, all right? He grows his own things, he's nice to that little jerk neighbor kid. He does everything he thinks he can to get into the good place, all right? So I was sitting there watching it, I'm like, huh, even though this isn't the same as Tahani, 
it seems similar to Tahani because by this point in the show, we've already seen that if you're trying to do something good to get into the good place, that's not how this works. Like, what was it, the end of season one or two, something like that where Eleanor sacrificed herself and left the good place so other people can stay, right? And it was this selfless act because she no longer cared about being in the good place. Um, and that's, that's something that we have to think about. Like, are you only doing this to get somewhere, okay? So, as it goes on, Michael then goes to the accounting office, and what they find out, what they find out is Doug Forsett, the guy who has been living his life perfectly, is not getting into the good place, all right? How is that possible? And then Michael, he has his epiphany. Unintended consequences. And here's a quick clip, and I hope my video doesn't get taken down. Yo, so they instantly claimed my video. So anyways, I'll link down to the clip below. But basically, it was a clip of Michael telling the judge that there are a bunch of unintended consequences. Like you buy a tomato, which is, you know, a part of, you know, pesticides being used, which contributes to global warming. And there's also, you know, people who are getting mistreated, who are picking the tomatoes, and all of that. So he discusses how when humans are making one decision, they're actually making 12 decisions, which can land them in the bad place. So what does this have to do with anything, all right? The conversation I wanna start having is that we all think, all of us in our own mind, this is something, this is a conversation I've been trying to have, and some people aren't there yet and ready to have that conversation. But in our own minds, we all think that we're the hero, right? But the reality is we're not these perfect individuals and we're constantly judging other people. But what the good place is showing us is that none of us are perfect. We're all doing something that could be deemed as morally bad, right? So when we look at the philosophy, so Chidi is this teacher. He teaches moral philosophy and ethics and all these other things, and he's trying to teach Eleanor. So uh, Chidi, it's very apparent that he subscribes to deontology, which came from Immanuel Kant, right? So deontology, that is a philosophy of you do the right thing no matter what. Okay, no matter what, you do the right thing. So that age old question, like, is it okay to steal a loaf of bread to feed your family? He would say no. So it's never okay to lie, cheat, steal, anything like that. But Eleanor, she subscribes more to utilitarianism, okay? So this is a philosophy of net positive, okay? So in any given situation, every situation is different, all right? But you're willing to make sacrifices for the best results, all right? So I guess the question is, which one of those is correct? Which one is, is correct? Never, ever, ever wavering? Like, I want you to ask yourself this, because I don't, I'm not a huge fan of deontology, but I want you to ask yourself this, all right? And a lot of movies have covered this. Think of John Q. Did any of you see John Q with Denzel Washington? His son was dying, needed a heart transplant. He did everything right, and they couldn't get his kid that transplant, right? So he did something where it was illegal. He held a bunch of people hostage in a hospital to save his son's life. Like he had to do this crazy thing to save his son's life, all right? So a lot of us, in my opinion, a lot of us, I think most logical and rational people subscribe to utilitarianism, okay? But I don't think either one is wrong. I think it's on a case by case basis. Like I think it's good to strive to be deontological, right? To always do the best no matter what, to minimize your lying and all that kind of stuff, right? But it's a case by case basis. And what we see throughout our life is not everything is so black and white. And that's why some people argue against deontology because there are different situations where you're gonna have to do something, right? That might be against your normal morals for the greater good. You see what I mean? So anyways, where is this all going? I'll start with myself, all right? But I'm kicking off a new series, Will Blank Get Into The Good Place? Because one of the biggest issues that I've seen in the YouTube community, specifically the commentary community, the 
uh, uh, drama community is everybody is playing the morality police. And like I said, the biggest lesson from The Good Place is, is that none of us are as morally pure as we try to, to tell the world that we are, right? And in this day and age, in the YouTube community, think of the, the commentary channels and the drama channels as kind of where they're counting everybody's points. They're saying who's doing good, who's doing bad. This is right, this is wrong, all right? But I wanna start pointing it back at all of us. There are so many things that we're doing. So, as you saw from what Michael said, like even eating a piece of fruit now is doing some kind of damage. So, I think this is something that you can learn more about just by watching John Oliver. It's really fascinating. So for example, John Oliver on Last Week Tonight did a whole episode about fashion, right? And we dive in there and you start to realize how, how much of our clothes are being made in other countries and things like that, and they're exploiting children, they're paying people no wages and all that kind of stuff. Like for example, iPhone, Apple Watch, this technology, this, this camera and everything like that. I don't know who created all of these things. I don't know who, who made these things. Are they getting paid the right amount? Would I agree with how much they're getting paid, right? This camera that I'm using, who created this? Was anybody harmed in making this? You see what I'm saying? So we can strive for that as much as possible. But another example is, I just dropped my son off and I came back home. I drive a, a, a small compact vehicle, which is low on emissions, but it's not 100% electric. So even dropping my son off, I contributed to some of the global warming. You see what I mean? So let's talk about self-awareness. People love to say that others aren't self-aware. And I think that is a, this kind of defense mechanism because most of us don't wanna look at our own faults. It's so much easier to point at other people and pick out all of their flaws and we don't realize everything that we're doing, all right? But at the end of the day, like, all we can do is our best. This is my humble opinion. All we can do is our best. We can try to minimize these things. So to finish this up, yesterday I made a video on Repzilla and he took it very personally, all right? And I don't blame him, but the overall message of that was, it's not just Rapzilla, it's all of the commentary community, it's all of the drama community playing the moral police and nobody is as morally good as they think they are. So I am going to start a series, Will Blank, get into the good place, and we're gonna analyze it, all right? I'm gonna be looking at different creators who are judging everybody else, and I'm gonna ask, would they get into the good place are they so infallible that they would get to the good place even though in the show, nobody has made it to the good place in 500 years, all right? The goal of this series, the reason why I'm doing this is, I think if we start to realize how none of us are perfect, we could start forgiving other people a lot easier and quit judging people so harshly, all right? The point of my Rebzilla video yesterday was to point out that morality is not this black and white thing, all right? I brought up topics such as being a vegetarian, polyamory, gay marriage, all of these things. There is so much that plays into morality. I love moral philosophy and psychology, and I don't know, I, I'm excited to start this series and who knows who I'll be talking about, but I think we need to, all of us, need to be taken down a few notches, especially the morality police here on YouTube, all right? But anyways, if you watch The Good Place, let me know down in the comments below um, because maybe I'll do some uh, episode breakdowns and everything like that because I love philosophy, psychology, and all that stuff. So to everybody who recommended that show to me, like, thank you so much. We binge watched the first three seasons in the last like week, week and a half or whatever. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you're new make sure you subscribe and ring the no notification bell because i'm kicking off a new series baby all right and a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on patreon or through buying my books or buying merch and all that stuff all of it greatly helps support the channel and just even all of you who watch the videos you help support the channel too all right anyways that's all i got for this video i'll see you next time